<laughs> ah, you're a ball, and you're ultra, and you're luscious, and I have a big ass, and you just might fit, you son of a bitch. Let's get into today's video while we're hard. Balls. <laughs> The ever living boo boo stain out of that subscribe button so that we can get to our goal of 1,000 subscribers. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen one of the little of these skits yet, well, uh, haha, <laughs> prepare to have nightmares tonight or tomorrow night, whenever the fuck you watch this video. I have people watching videos that I made fucking five months ago asking me about something I said. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck I had for breakfast this morning. So smash that subscribe and like button so we can get to our fucking goal as my computer turns off because I need this for some fucking light because my room sucks ass when it comes to light. Still trying to get a fan up in here. So let's talk about what the title of the video says, and that is that we are overdue for a tier zero format, and my anus will not be relaxed until we get a tier zero format. Now, I'll all jokes aside, I say this because of the fact that it seems like every few years we tend to get a tier zero format in Yu-Gi-Oh! And despite what many people say about tier zero formats, yes, they are very bad for the game. At the same time, as unhealthy as they are, they're also very good for the game because it identifies big issues, whether it be cards or decks, archetypes as a whole that Konami needs to hit on an adjusted list, as they called it fucking years ago. It was an emergency ban list. Let's just call it what it is. Um, and so it, they can hit things like that. Archetypes, they can hit specific cards, you know, uh, Vertanaconda, Dragoons, Mystic Mine, Halky Firex, things like that come into play. And I say that we are near a tier zero format because we have Darkwing Blast right around the corner that has the brand new as I like to call it, Kshatri La archetype, which is based basically on Shangri-La. Um, if you're not familiar with like world history, essentially Shangri-La was like this mythical city that people like grew 10 fucking heads and I don't know, grew crops and made pyramids and shit. It's, it's like a folk tale, basically, from what I understand. <laughs> so basically it, it's based on Shangri-La, which is really cool. Um, I mean, even Call of Duty made a zombies map based on Shangri-La because it's it's just a really cool concept. The problem is, is that in Darkwing Blast, the set as a whole is really not that good. You know what I mean? Like, we're getting the Kashatri stuff. We're getting Blackwing support, which I'm sorry if you love Blackwings. Blackwings are still going to be booty booty butt cheeks until the cows come home. Um, and then we're also getting the new Bystead archetype, which has monsters that are quick effects or that have quick effects to special summon them from the hand by banishing a light or dark if the opponent controls a monster. So you don't like tier elements playing on your turn? Ha <laughs> ha! They're going to be able to do it more and they're going to be able to be hard and they're going to have these big ass fucking dragons that just stare you down and they're like, hey, you going to eat that pizza, bro? <laughs> like, like literally they're just going to be sitting there going, hey, bro, you going to finish that pizza? <laughs> so, like, yeah, it's it's disgusting how good those cards are. They also have the Bystead, like, I think it's called Alba Los, which is a 3,300 attack and defense fucking behemoth. Like, it looks like something, like, out of, an, like, uh, a Demon Souls, like, anime or something. Like, it's it's insane. Like, the art looks cool. It's a high-level monster. has some disgusting effects. Um, so, we're getting those. And then, of course, the Kashat Relaw stuff. And now, out of Photon Hypernova, which just got revealed, uh, like, really early this morning, we saw... That Tier Elements is getting a new field spell, which seems pretty good. And then Kashatri La is getting new support in Photon Hypernova. So it's really hard to say as we're waiting on the cusp of a ban list. We've been saying that for fucking a month now. Take a shot every time I've said that. And it all comes down to like what this ban list hits. You know, if we don't have a whole lot of hits or for whatever reason they say no fucking changes, which I'm... <laughs> I'm going to have to stop playing the game for several months if that happens. Um, but you combine like what we're getting on Darkwing Blast with Photon Hypernova, which we probably won't get until like 2023, roughly, like the beginning of 2023. Um, and so when you factor all of that in, it's, it, it's, it's easy to make an argument that we may be on the cusp of a tier zero format where like we get all these new cards with tier elements at full power, not to mention Magnificent Mavens that's going to have the milling support. And we could potentially see a tier zero format, especially too with the fact that if you've noticed just week to week since Power of the Elements came out, tier elements has been getting more and more solved as a deck, solving the issues of the RNG as a whole. Like 
Did anyone think when Power of the Elements first dropped that we'd see fucking D3S Frog, a common out of like Shadow of Infinity that's like $30 now, which is insane to me, being played in tier elements? Like, no, nobody would have thought that. And now we're seeing D3S Frog being played just because of the fact that it's a target for like the branded trap to dump it and like get a search and do fun shenanigans. And so, you know, everybody thought that Sprite was going to be a tier zero deck. Turned out to just be tier one. And even then, it's just being splashed into different decks as like an engine. Um, and people are just absolutely prepared for it. And so it just, it goes to show, number one, how different the OCG and the TCG format are. Like, as I said in my uh, tier list video that I just made yesterday, combo decks don't tend to get solved until they come to the TCG compared to the OCG. Because Max C is a card in the OCG. And that's how insane max c is as a card that it just completely warps their format and so you have to keep that in mind when you look at sets coming out here in the tcg and then you also have things like world premieres like we didn't know about garua until like the last hour <laughs> before power of the elements came out you know what i mean so you combine all that together you combine that konami or rather you give as a whole doesn't have a set rotation which is fine i'm not saying we need to have set rotation it's just that with all these cards coming out now that we may be due in for a tier zero format. And when you look at like the history of tier zero formats, you know, I, I kind of like to start with like 2013 because in my mind, Dragon Rulers is really what set the tone for modern Yu-Gi-Oh! That if you look at the history of Yu-Gi-Oh! Look at my retrospective series, sh shameless plug. Dragon Rulers really began what we now see as modern Yu-Gi-Oh! They were that first gigantic power creep and Dragon Rulers just came in and smacked your girlfriend's ass and was like, what you gonna do? Like, the deck was fucking bonkers. And so, when you look at that, every like two to three years, we seem to have a tier zero format. 2013, Dragon Rulers came out tier zero. 2014, weren't exactly tier zero, but they were still pretty good. You hit 2015, so two years removed from the last tier zero format, you had Necroz, God damn it, computer. <laughs> you had Necroz, and then I believe like in late 2015, 2016, we had Clee Forts, which was tier zero for a time, not the whole format, more Necroz than Clee Fort from what I recall. 2017, we had Spiral, and then I believe it was in like 2017, early 2018, that we had Gokis come in at tier zero with Rongo Bongo, and it was just bananas. So, Every couple of years or so, shit, even like every year, we were seeming to hit a tier zero format for a time. But then 2019, COVID hit, and we didn't have events for two years, and it was just nothing. We still had some data to pull from from re remote duels, but as I said before in my Master Duels Terrible video, which has over 7,000 views, believe it or not, I talked about how a lot of people were admitting on Facebook, specifically Zodiac Duels, to cheating. You know, people had these shitty webcams, and they were printing out like colored copies uh, colored printouts of like cards that I needed, let's say forbidden droplets, and just stuffing them bitches into a sleeve. So it's kind of hard to say what those formats really were for, you know, those two years of time. Now that we have events back, we haven't really seen much of anything with tier zero. You know, we've had high representation of things, but we're, we haven't seen like a tier zero deck just jump in out of nowhere. And I think now that we're roughly a year and a half, two years removed from like the two years of no events because of COVID, I think that we're really on the cusp for a tier zero format. Again, that's not a bad thing because if we have a tier zero format, that's going to lead to a bunch of changes in the game that may happen sooner rather than later, whether it's on an emergency balance or just the next balance that we get for that time. You know, it's, it's hard to say at this point. And I'm not saying that, you know, we're gonna have a tier zero format in like a month five months or even a year. I'm saying at some point, probably within the next couple of years, I would, I would say two years, we're going to have a tier zero format. It's just going to happen based upon the past experiences of the game and things that have happened. And I think COVID really threw a monkey wrench into that. And that's why we didn't see any sort of tier zero deck crop up. Not that they should happen. It's just, it's eventually going to happen because that's just how Yu-Gi-Oh is. So again, not a bad thing because it just means that a lot of stuff in the game will change. And really, I feel like a majority of the community likes big changes in the game. They like seeing a lot of things happen on the balance, not just a couple hits. So guys, please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Are you looking forward to a tier zero format? Do you think that we're overdue for a tier zero format? Or am I just blowing an ultra ball out of my ass 
Although I have been playing Pokemon Soul Silver, so that's been fun. Also, the trade that you do from a chop, that thing is fucking busted. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching. I will see you in the next video.